Anyway, uh, David Nicholas, Nicholas Wells Management CEO, joins us. Love having David on. He can step back and give us a big picture of this. Um, what do you make of this? Uh, because, you know, Target also talking about, well, we're not quite sure how much the, you know, the shopper is going to be doing this year. But so w- w- how do you assess it all? Yeah, Neil, we'll start with some good news. I mean, unlike Home Depot and Target, Walmart saw some pretty good continued growth in comp store sales. Same store sales growth for, for Walmart was very healthy. And you're right, they beat on both top and bottom. So what, what went wrong here? I mean, the stock was up 17% before this report year to date. Target was down about 30% year to date. So there's a big gap. The stock was due for some pullback, but this came down to guidance. And Walmart, I think rightly so, said, look, we're being cautious about a weaker consumer going into next year. But, Neil, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here. If we have a weaker consumer, which I think we do, I think that benefits Walmart, right? Walmart is a leader in cost. If the consumer's hurting, guess what? They're going to Walmart. They're mm-hmm. looking for deals. So I actually think Walmart is a beneficiary of a weak consumer, not a victim of it. Yeah. How does Wall Street balance that right now? If you think about it, David, I mean, I, they, they've moved on from thinking there are future rate hikes coming. Some are now zealously clasping the possibility of rate cuts. I don't know about that. But there's a flip side to that. Rates go down as they are again today for the tenure. I think we're at around 4.55%, 45%, I apologize. Um, and that's produced lower mortgage rates, and, and everyone likes that. But sometimes that can be a reflection. The market sees a slowdown coming. What about, what about you? Yeah, that's right. I mean, the market is ready for for lower rates. But I think it really comes down to where, where's the Fed's appetite on this? Because remember, the Fed somewhat still has a credibility issue. They got inflation wrong on the front end. They don't want to get it wrong on the back end. So I know the market is really pushing for this. But, Neil, it's one thing to get inflation to three, three and a half percent, which is great. We're making progress. Yeah. It's a whole nother thing to get it down to two percent. This is where it gets hard. Is the Fed just going to pretend that the targets changed and we stay in this three percent world for the next few years? Or are they going to really do what it takes to go from three to two? And I think this is the big challenge for the Fed. And so I think that it, the market is uh, very optimistic. I think they're ahead of itself a little bit. We got to see, is the Fed really going to put it, the pedal here to inflation? I think there's still room here that we could still see hikes. I know the market doesn't want that. Mm. I know the, the futures don't show that. But in a world of 3%, that's still well above target. I know it seems like we're getting there. We're still above target. So that means there could still be room here for the Fed to still mess with rates. I wonder what the reaction would be to another hike in the markets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we already saw the malaise in the market for the last few months. The, right. the market does not want to hike. And I know this is somewhat contrarian. But again, Either the target is 2%, Neil, or it's something else. I just want to remind investors, we're not at 2%. We're heading there. But that's going to be the toughest thing. That last 1% is going to be really tough. A lot of that's wages. A lot of that's built into the economy. I don't know if the Fed has the appetite to get there. We'll see. Um, Have we then already had our Santa Claus rally just a little early? In other words, what do the next six weeks or so hold in your eyes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 4550 was my year end target. Uh, we're basically on the, there. On the right? We have a little bit of pullback right? today on, on, on the S&P. Right. So so look, may, maybe another one to two percent upside. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I'd love to see 4600 into year end. But I, I think we're in this 45 to 4550 range going into the year end now, which, again, is better than where we were a couple months ago. But, you know, still ways to go from the all time highs for S&P. And a lot better than where we were a year ago. So how do you see 2024 shaping up. It's election year, traditionally a good one for the markets. Um, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I don't want to disappoint our, our viewers, but election years generally is a year of unknown, right? Investors want to know who's the next president. Right, is, right. It, is it going to be Biden? Is President Biden is going to be someone else? Is it going to be President Trump? When there's unknown, Neil, normally we see investors just put their hands up and say, I'm going to wait and see what happens. So I think we have a sideways market from January going into November. The only thing that could derail that is the inflation story that we just discussed. But I don't think next year is going to be a very exciting year for investors. All right. Well, watch closely, David. Great seeing you. I don't get a chance to talk to you again before Thanksgiving. Have a good one and a safe one. Thanks, Neil. You too. All right.